Hey everyone, this is Brie Noble and I am recording the Female Entrepreneur Musician podcast today live and I am excited to talk about the five steps to become more proactive in your music career. Last episode, we talked about the things that are keeping you stuck, the things that are keeping you struggling and not moving forward and now we're going to talk about how you can shift those and how you can become way more proactive in your career, even if you feel like you, you've got these circumstances that are holding you back. We're gonna talk about ways that you can make shifts in both your mindset and your action so you can start moving forward. So last time we talked about the reactive mindset and how artists become reactive, which causes our career basically to be controlled by other people. We're waiting for other people to give us validation. They're waiting, we're waiting for other people to tell us that, you know, we're good enough or give us the green light that like we deserve a career in music. Um, we're waiting for our life circumstances to change and like open up this like free highway toward, okay, now I see that I have got space in my life to do a music career and I am telling you that will not happen. We have to fit it into where we are. And I realize that's not easy, but that is what needs to be done because you'll never have the perfect circumstances to be able to, to do this in a way that feels like, oh my gosh, I've got an open playing field. So we also talked about, um, just being stuck in always learning mode and several other things. And I'm going to talk about those today and how we can shift those into becoming proactive in our career. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is, as I just mentioned, that feeling like you always need to learn something new. You always need to keep learning because you're going to hit this threshold eventually and you're like, okay, now I feel qualified to lead my career. And that is never going to happen. Either it's, you feel like you need to have like this breadth of knowledge, this, you know, you need to reach like this certain bar of knowledge, or you feel like there's this like secret out there that you haven't found yet that these other artists have. And if you just keep searching, if you just keep reading blog posts and going to webinars and, um, you know, taking courses and all those things that you're going to find it. And so you just keep doing that. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with blog posts and webinars and courses, but a lot of times artists use the need to consume more as an excuse, keeping you in that reactive mindset of once I've hit this certain bar of having all the knowledge that I need, then I can take action. It's almost like we're trying to give ourselves this like college degree that we didn't get in music marketing and business uh, by getting it on the internet, which is great. You can learn so much, but you feel like, okay, well, I need to graduate. I need to, you know, get all these credits and everything. And then at the end, I will be able to say that I'm qualified enough to start doing things. But keep in mind, when you're in college, it's not like you're just taking in information. You're doing projects, you're taking exams, like you're utilizing the information. And that's why we need to be utilizing the information that we're learning as we are learning it instead of just storing it up into this, this like knowledge base. So as I mentioned last time, there's no secret like sauce, no secret um, thing that other artists have discovered that you haven't, that you just, if you just keep searching for it, you're going to get it. Everything out there that people are saying, like, unless these people are scammers or shysters, everything out there works. But it also doesn't work. It depends on you, how committed you are to it, um, whether it's a good fit for you, and whether you're going to really commit to it and take action. So learning a new strategy is not going to suddenly change your career. 
You've got to try that out, see if it fits well for you. And, you know, for example, in my business, I definitely wanted to focus on video and YouTube and that kind of thing, but I tried doing it the way that YouTube um, professionals tell you to do, and I didn't like it. I was like, I just am not going to be able to commit to this. I find this to be drudgery, right? But it works for tons of other of my friends that focus on their YouTube channel and they build their audience there and they're doing all the tactics and they're working for them. But for me, like they would have worked for me if I would have committed to them. But I was like, I just don't, I don't like this. I much, I would much prefer to like grow Instagram or, you know, do Facebook lives. So that is what I chose. But that doesn't mean that that course or that strategy doesn't work. It just means that it's not right for me. And so you cannot figure out if a thing is right for you or not, unless you try it and you put it to the real test. So you know, the journey is your school. Like you can get knowledge, but you can't really test it out and see if it's going to work for you unless you actually put it into action and decide. Also for me, I was, as I was starting my business and as I was a musician as well, like I was learning and taking a lot of courses, but I figured out that those were not doing enough for me. I needed that accountability from somebody to make sure that I was actually implementing it, which is why I started getting coaching, why I started, you know, buying the next level of the course where there was a lot more individual attention for me because that's what I needed to make sure that I took action on the material. And then getting into groups inside of these coaching situations of people that were doing the same thing, I needed that because I needed to feel that there was that support there because things aren't always going to go as you want. I, I tell this story about my first webinar and how it was an, a total disaster. You know, the technology broke down and um, it, you know, the webinar like shut down after like two minutes and, you know, the people that showed up, they were just like left out in the lurch. And I just felt like so awful. I was so embarrassed and having the group of people that were doing, you know, were in the coaching group with me, I went to them and like, oh my gosh, this is what happened. I just want to hide under a rock, all that. And they're like, oh, it's happened to me before. People will understand, no big deal. And I was like, really? <laughs> you know, I, I felt like it was the end of the world. And so having groups of people around you, you know, maybe you work really hard to market a concert and nobody shows up and you, you might just shut down and just decide I'm not doing this anymore. But if you had a group of people that you were with and you told them and they're like, oh yeah, this happened to me all the time in the beginning of my career. But, you know, then I started doing X, Y, and Z, and that really helped make sure people showed up. Like, it's all a learning process, and we're all going through it, and knowing that others are experiencing similar things is so helpful. So that is number one. Um, do not stay only in learning mode. Don't think that you need to know everything in order to take step one. The journey is the school. Okay, number two is that reactive artists shrink from haters and trolls. So we all know that there are haters and trolls online for everyone. I don't care if you're doing the most humanitarian thing in the world, there's gonna be someone out there, if you put yourself out there enough that thinks it's it's dumb, it's a bad idea, it's evil, whatever. There's There's people that have so many opinions and because we are online and it opens it up to the world of craziness that is out there beyond all the amazing people that do want to support you, you are going to find some people that just are not very nice. <laughs> and the thing is that reactive artists think that this is saying something about them. They are feeling like, okay, well, if this, per this one person 
or two people think that what I'm doing is bad, it must be bad. It must not be valuable. Even though there's a ton of other people that say that it is. So something that I have talked about in my community and I hear people repeating and I'm so happy about it is that I say that you should consider haters a badge of honor. And here's why. Because as I said, 99% of people are going to love what you're doing. They're not going to attack you. They're, they're not going to do anything like that. But there's this 1% that will. And if you put yourself out there enough to find haters, that means that you have reached so many more people who aren't haters. 99% of the people are going to love what you're doing. And so if you find two haters, that means that what? 200 and, or 198 people that you reached love what you do. So you've got to think of it that way. You've got to think of it about, it's a numbers game, just like everything else. It's a numbers game that when you find your one or two weird haters and trolls, you know that you've reached that other 198 people who need to hear your music, need to know your message. And you're, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. If you are, then you're probably too vanilla. We need to be polarizing in some way. You know, when I say you should consider haters as a badge of honor, Somebody out there's not going to like that. They're not going to like that message. They're going to be, no, that's stupid. I don't ever want haters. What is she talking about? And they're going to tune me out. And that's fine. Because if I'm vanilla and I'm afraid of anyone having a disagreement with me, then I'm not going to attract anyone. I'm just, they're just going to be like, oh, that's nice. And they're going to go on to someone else that is going to be a lot more polarizing and attractive. So with your message, with your music, don't be vanilla just because you're afraid of haters. So that is number two of our steps to becoming more proactive. Don't be afraid of haters. Don't let them water down your message and your music. Consider them a badge of honor. All right, number three. Number three is that this is about your, your to-do list and feeling utterly pressured and overwhelmed. We've got to get past this because if you're feeling that way, you will be stuck. You will be immobilized and paralyzed by it. So reactive artists are crushed under the weight of their mounting to-do list. And this kind of compounds from the first one because if you're learning a ton of things you're and not taking action on them, then you're putting them all on your to-do list. And your to-do list is getting longer and longer because you're like, oh, I really should be doing this and I should be doing this. Oh my gosh, I just learned about this on a blog post or I just saw this webinar, I should be doing this. And you keep adding to your to-do list, but it never gets shorter because you just look at it and feel overwhelmed and you're like, oh, it's just easier to like learn about more things now because taking action is hard. And so it just gets longer and longer. And so what this does for you wonderful artists is it really does stunt your creativity because you feel like, okay, why should I keep creating music if I'm not going to do anything with it? That's number one, because you're not doing anything. And then number two is that just the weight of that pressure of the to-do list and always feeling overwhelmed is not going to put you in a space that's going to make you very creative in order to make new amazing music. So think about that. Secondly, reactive artists tend to blame this on being right-brained. And yes, you may be right-brained, but there are ways that you can um, mitigate that by setting up systems around being more productive that are going to work for you. And so you really can't use that as an excuse. I see so many amazing right-brained artists that 
are doing awesome things because they've put systems in place for themselves. Now, lucky for me, I'm kind of both. But if you're not, that doesn't mean you can't, you have to be like that all over the place, only spontaneous, like only when, um, you know, when inspiration strikes, am I going to do this, this or that? You can set up systems that work around the kind of, of thinker that you are. And then they also tend to blame others and their circumstances. And I talked about this on last week's episode in that when we are feeling bad about ourselves and our lack of progress, we tend to be like, okay, well, it's my life. It's, it's all these responsibilities that I have. That's the reason. And yes, that is contributing to it, right? But we all have those things. We all have things in our life that are keeping us from doing what we want to do and we have to figure out how to work around those. And it's also the way that we're looking at those circumstances. If we're looking at them as, you know, they're totally immovable, that there's nothing we can do about them and, you know, that it's totally out of our control, then that's how we're going to feel. But if we approach them in a way where we're changing our thoughts around them. And like, yeah, it's hard to be a mom and to go on tour, but I'm gonna figure this out. Or it's hard to be a musician and have an autoimmune disease or health issues, you know, whatever it is that you're struggling with, you can find a way to make those coexist. It's not going to look like the perfect picture that you might have thought in your youth or even now that it's gonna be, but you can still do it. It doesn't mean that your your dreams of having some kind of music career are over. So the thing is that proactive artists always know that they are one step closer to their goals. They're not comparing themselves to other artists and how far ahead they are because they know their circumstances are different. They are just knowing because they mapped out all the steps to achieve their goals and move forward that even if they just do one thing per day, you know, I advocate for three things a day, but if you can only do one, you're still moving forward instead of feeling like oh you know doing this one thing it's not very much what's the point then you aren't moving forward so it's the way that you look at things the way that you you frame them in your mind of like oh this is just one tiny thing what's the point versus this is one more step toward my goal so that is number three in the way that you look at your your to-do list and knowing that you've got it mapped out toward the goals that you want to achieve and not look at it as something that is burdening you, but something that is just giving you the steps. Okay, so number four is that reactive artists associate fear with risk. They tend to have this like fight or flight reaction to risk. And if we really want to pursue a music career, there is risk involved. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There's definitely risk involved, right? You've got, you've invested in yourself in multiple ways, in recordings, in learning, in uh, coaches and in producers and all the things, right? And so there's definitely some risk involved. You can't just bury your head in the sand and be like, no, there's no risk involved in this. But because people are reactive, they, they, they fear risk so much that they tend to just run away from it in order to keep themselves safe. And the reason that they think this is scary and that it's not safe is because they believe that failure is bad. Now, in last week's episode, when I did this live and I put it up on YouTube and all that, I had a lot of people responding to what I said here um, when I said that I love the phrase, you can win or you can learn, but there's no such thing as failure because failure is just a stepping stone towards success. 
and I don't even like using the word failure. You know, it's, it's more like um, the outcome that you didn't expect, <laughs> you know? It's not really failure, but a lot of times we feel like it is because it didn't go the way we wanted. But because reactive artists are feeling like that is such a bad thing, they're so scared of failure that they are just doing everything they can to protect themselves from it. And that is what's keeping them from actually taking any risks in their career at all because they don't want to fail. But what if you felt like every failure that you had was moving you closer to your goal? Failure leaves clues. And if you are, you know, if you're paying attention, you learn way more from failures than you do from successes. Because there's nothing to learn in a success other than, okay, that worked. Let's do more of that. <laughs> With failure, you, there's so many ways that you can look at it. Okay, so why did this fail? Was it this? Was it this? How can I change this next time to make it better? And the other thing about, about, you know, failure and risk and all of that is that I always looked at it as so many people out there in my space, whatever I'm doing, are going to adopt this. Like they're going to be this fight or flight, this fear is going to overtake them and they're going to give up. It's just the natural human state, right? Because we don't like it. It's super uncomfortable. And so I always felt like if I just stayed in the game long enough, I would outlast most people. And that would automatically lead to success because I would still be left on the field when most other people wouldn't. And that has proven to be true time and time again in my career. So I just encourage you, like, it's uncomfortable to fail. It's uncomfortable to take risks. But just know that most people won't be able to sustain it. And if you can just stay in the game longer than they can, you'll come out on top. And then number five is that reactive artists are always searching for solutions. Like I said, they think that there's this like magic answer out there somewhere. There's this magic pill um, that they just haven't found it yet that other artists have found and that's why they're successful. But proactive artists create their own solutions. And let me give you a few examples in my career. So when I was a touring musician or before that, when I was trying to figure things out, and I had a two-year-old and I was like, okay, all these venues that I see where I could perform are not very friendly to two-year-olds and they're super late at night and they're just not going to work for my schedule. And so from what I was seeing, I was like, I, I can't have a music career because this is the kind of thing you have to do if you want to build a career. And I was stuck in that for a while. But then I said, okay, well, what if, I designed the career that worked for me because clearly this, this other one's not going to work. So that's out. So my choice is don't do it at all or get scrappy and figure out a, a way that will work for me. And so I came up with my idea of having my um, signature talk where I was a speaker as well as performed my music and I could do it during the day. I could do it at community events. I could do it at mothers of preschoolers groups. I could do it at women's groups, all places where um, some of which I could actually bring my daughter and they had free babysitting, but others where they were during the day. So I could ask, you know, my daughter's godmother to watch her because it was during the day. And that was, that was just a way that I was able to be like, I'm just going to design this career the way that works for me. And I came up with my own solution. I came up with venues that matched what I needed. 
another example of that is when I started Women of Substance. You know, I was always like, why am I not hearing enough women on the radio or Sirius XM or even on like online radio? You know, everywhere I went, it was just not enough women, which I couldn't understand because we were coming out of the, the Lilith Fair era and I'm like so many amazing women. Why am I not hearing this? So instead of like trying to, you know, complain and, uh, and, and get in people's faces about this, which I could have, I'm not sure it would have had the desired result though. Instead, I created my own solution. I created women of substance because I wanted to, to empower women. And as an artist, you know, at that time I thought, well, and I'm going to also use it to promote my own music, which I didn't end up doing a lot of, but that was the impetus for it. It's like the solution that I want is not out there, but I'm going to make my own solution. And time and time again in my career, that has been the thing that I think really kept me going is that I was always scrappy. I was always looking for solutions. And I think of so many of my friends that are in the industry that did similar things. They didn't take things at face value. They looked deeper. They looked at things that could be tailored to them and their circumstances. And instead of being like, oh, my circumstances suck. They don't match, you know, what people are expecting or offering so I can't do it they were like no these are my circumstances let me see how I can make those an asset for my career like by coming up with ways that I can work within my current circumstances so those are the five ways that I want to encourage you to become more proactive in your music career and as um I've been talking a lot about reactive versus proactive. I've one reason that I've been talking about this a lot is because I've seen with my students that they have all the information, they have all the knowledge, but they're not taking action. And so much of it is mindset, right? That I think is only able to be changed with guidance from a coach, support from a group of people that are all doing something similar, and also having that support of an accountability of like, yes, we're going to be doing these things. We're going to be taking action on these things and not just learning. And this is something that I'm becoming really passionate about because I really I want to make sure that people are making progress. It's really important to me. And so I have created um, something that is going to be coming out very soon. That's called the Musician's Profit Path Accelerator Program. And if you know, um, my best-selling book, The Musician's Profit Path came out in 2019. And I have used this framework to help artists make progress in their career. But I want to take this to an even deeper level because I want to really, really make sure that artists get results. And that's why I'm creating this accelerator program. So if this something, if this is something that sounds interesting to you, if all this that I said today resonates and you're ready to become that proactive artist, this is like a skill that you build. And then you can use this for the the rest of your career. Like you build these muscles of being a leader in your music career. You build them once and they stick with you. So if this sounds like something you'd like to be involved in, I've got a wait list right now. Uh, It's we're going to be starting this program in October. We haven't released it yet, but if you want to, sign up and get all the information as soon as it's available, as well as getting some special perks for being on the wait list, go to profitablemusician.com slash accelerator, profitablemusician.com slash accelerator, A-C-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-O-R. 
And I will be in touch within the next few days to let you know more about this program that I'm super excited about. So thank you all for hanging out with me today. I see some of you in the comments here. Thank you so much for the lovely, um, the lovely responses here and just appreciate you all in my community and just know that I believe so much in you and your music and that the world needs to hear it. I want to make sure that that happens. And that's what this whole, this whole push that I'm doing for artists to be more proactive is all about. So have a fantastic day. Talk to you soon.